I'm Jesse McAnally. And I'm Andrew DeWolf. And I'm Brandon Jones. And welcome to Musicals with Cheese, a podcast where I try to get Andrew and Brita like musical theater. And guys, we have an extra special guest. Oh, another special guest? We have one of those every week, Jess. Not not every week, but <laughs> some of them are more special than others, and we've got a special one today. All guests um, are please... special, but some are more special than others. <laughs> yes, yes, that is a fair description. Please welcome our special guest, Adam Tinius, the creator of Entertain the Elk and one of the greatest content creators out there. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Am I supposed to bow? Am I, do I bow or yes, do I clap? Yeah, do yes. like a bow, a bow you want. a curtsy, do both. and a spin. And a, okay, I'll do all yeah. that real quick. Okay. Oh my god, he on X Games mode. Wow, well, he just did it. Wow. Yeah, he did it. <laughs> Unless you're on our Patreon, you you didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, you didn't see it, but he did it. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Adam. Yeah. Um, I was so shocked when you suggested this musical. I, I forgive me for just dive again, but like, I didn't know this existed. It blew my mind, and even after watching it, I'm still not 100 percent sure it existed. So, what are we talking about this week, Adam? Yeah. So, first of all, you're welcome because <laughs> I get to bring. I can't believe you haven't discussed it before, but I'm bringing Footloose, not the movie. Footloose the musical. Oh, yeah. And it's about to rock your worlds and blow your minds at the same time. Uh, on that note, Bree, cue the music. is a musical with music by Tom Snow and lyrics by Dean Pitchford and a book by Dean Pitchford and Walter Bobble. Um, it's weird because this is the same guy that brought us Carrie the musical. You know, that 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 classic. It is the 1998 musical based on the 1984 film of the same name. It opened on Broadway at the Richard Rogers Theater on October 22nd, 1998 and ran for 709 performances. And just to say, Hamilton is currently running in that theater at the moment. It closed on July 2nd, 2000. It received mixed critical reception. Um, the general consensus was that the show was in and of itself poor, but the music and talented cast made it entertaining. It was nominated <laughs> for four Tony Awards, but won nothing. And the plot of this is when Ren and his mother move from Chicago to a small farming town, Ren is prepared for the adjustment to his new high school. When he isn't prepared for are the local laws, including a ban on dancing, which is the brainchild of the local preacher bent on exercising control over the town's youths. <laughs> When the Reverend's rebellious daughter sets her heart on Wren, her boyfriend tries to sabotage Wren's reputation, and many of the locals are eager to believe the worst about the new kid. With its Oscar-nominated hit score, the film soundtrack album has sold over 15 million copies worldwide, the celebrated film musical now bursts explosively <laughs> onto the stage. <laughs> I, I I love those press release little descriptions Very of the plot. I'm pretty yeah. sure that was I think that was exactly what they put in their playbill too. So that's great. Um, Adam, what where, where why is this on your radar? I'm very very <laughs> curious. Yeah, I'm curious as well. Okay, so I can't remember if I mentioned it to you or not or earlier when we were talking, but I actually performed this my senior year in high school. So I was in this musical. So that's why I feel like I knew it enough and I thought it might be strange enough and not as mainstream maybe, even though we all know the movie for the most part. But yeah, it's it's a, a musical that's near and dear to me because it was it marked by my senior year of high school. Who did you play? Uh, yeah. I played uh, Willard, the best friend. Oh, okay. So I had a decent that's part. That's a fun role. Yeah. That's a fun role too. Yeah, the yeah. comedic kind of part in the side. You have like a song and you kind of a weird song which we'll get to in here but <laughs> oh yeah but yeah that's, that's kind of the best but like, those are the parts i always like playing where you're not the show doesn't like rest on your shoulders but you can kind of come in and say something kind of goofy or stupid and get a laugh and then you're kind of gone and before you have to do too much or screw up something so so yeah so had, had none of you 
You guys hadn't even heard of it? No, no, no one's seen it? No one's heard of it? Nothing. Nothing. Wow. Uh, like, because I had even heard of, like, the other kind of film adaptations. But this was, like, yeah. in the 90s, the dark era of, the like... The dark era? <laughs> it is the dark era of Broadway is the sad thing. Like, nothing good was nominated. And so things like this would sneak in and sneak out just as quickly. Yeah. Um, but you know where this really took off. Um, I think this will be a shock to Adam, but definitely not to Andrew. Um, the UK. The UK loves this musical. Really? Because of course they do. <laughs> they really That was like... going to be my first guess. Yeah. Because they really it like this is. kind of show. They love this type of brand. They love based on movies, um, pop scores, and like th- that is a brand that they like. Like David Hasselhoff I mean, singing pop songs is yeah, like yeah. a hit show in their world. And like Mamma Mia was over there as well, at least before That's where it was they a originated movie, it. Or... We will rock you. All of those things oh, are we successes will rock you. Oh, boy. over in the UK <laughs> that do very poorly here in the US. So that was where I was like, oh, okay. And it's had like four different tours of it throughout the West End after its West End revival. I'm so surprised about why it would do well in the UK. Uh, is it just like maybe because maybe it feels more quaint because it's like about a small kind of like, I don't know, I don't know if they ever specifically say Texas. But they they have a lot of kind of like Texas isms, kind of small we got a town. Cowboy. We got a full on cowboy. Yeah, like Bible Belt kind of like vibe going on. So maybe it just felt kind of like just like oh, this is weird and a, and a picture into some kind of weird cultural world. That maybe maybe I don't know. I think I, they just like holding out for a hero and hearing that. And yeah, being able well, and Kenny like, Loggins. Who doesn't like Kenny Loggins? Come on now. The other types of shows that they do, it doesn't really matter what the plot is. It's just yeah. like, oh, they're all singing pop songs. Like, you know, Mamma Mia. Like, I don't. I didn't even know what the plot to that was, but I knew all the songs. <laughs> you know, but like, that's just the type of thing that that we uh, have covered from over there yeah but if you think about it like the mamma mia film is still the highest grossing film in the uk ever like really <laughs> is oh, wow. it really i yes. did not know that ever? oh my gosh <laughs> yes that was one of their biggest box wow. office draws in their entire existence that is how big like the pop score musicals are in the uk uk is an um, anomaly i have no i can't explain it, it. it i don't understand <laughs> it we've had people from the uk on and they're like it's just what we like <laughs> Well, they they understand this musical's genius, uh, which you two clearly do not. So I mean, uh, I, I don't even side. think it's I don't think it's bad. I don't even think it's like <laughs> one of the top five worst things we've ever covered. But it was just I didn't know what to expect. Um, I've never seen the original Footloose film. Um, oh, you, oh, really? So I kind of went into this completely <laughs> okay. blind. I've seen the clips of Kevin Bacon dancing and all of that, but that's about it. You and know, so you know the clips this. of him like dancing in the warehouse, uh, just exactly. kind of angry yeah. dancing. Yeah. Um, so, out of curiosity, how accurate is this to the original film? Oh man, uh, gosh, I haven't seen the movie in a while. I know when I was gonna, when I know that we were doing it in high school, my first thoughts were, how are we gonna do the warehouse dancing scene? Because obviously that's in there somewhere. It was it not. And also nope. it's like, how are we gonna do the tractors doing chicken uh, scene? Because I don't know if you still haven't seen Phyllis the movie, there's a scene where these two, they're like the, the Ren and Chuck, I think, the, the bad guy kind of who's with Ariel, the asshole boyfriend. Mm-hmm. They are like, yeah, playing chicken in tractors. And I was like, that's like the best moment in the movie. And how are we doing that's this? Not, that's not there. That's not in there. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Also, it's such a rare find. Like, even despite it being well known in the UK, it is not easy to find any full length recordings of this that aren't high school productions. Oh, so totally. Yeah. Me and Andrew got the legitimate authentic experience of the watching a high experience. school. <laughs> Which has got to be hard because with this, yeah, I mean, and I wonder what it's been like as you like discuss musicals because sometimes performers. there's like a Sometimes there's like a definitive <laughs> musical version and then you can discuss a lot more of like the props and the actors and the wardrobe. But here, yeah, it's kind of like what version did you see? I, I rewatched my own high school performance, so that's the <laughs> only one I've ever seen. So Where, I can talk about my high school. Were you like, oh, oh man, absolutely, that was a great year. yeah. <laughs> it, made, it made me it made me feel really old because that was about 16 years ago now, uh, and <laughs> laugh so much, but also cringe so much, and you kind of watch it just kind of through your fingers of how like terrible it was at parts. Um, so yeah, I, so God bless you guys for whatever high school version you guys had to watch. Uh, well, hopefully, do you it wasn't know what high bad. school it was, Jess? 
Can we call I them don't. out? I don't. I, I feel like I shouldn't, for one, because that's I... That's probably... Yeah, that's true. I feel like we might reference them not being particularly good, and I don't want to kind of shit on a poor high school production. Ba- bash on, on those 16 and 17-year-olds yeah, for that's not very trying nice. to have a dream. <laughs> I will say that at a certain point, you're not really paying attention to the what's going on on stage. You're like, man, I wonder if they're all friends. That one, they seem to have drama between each other. You start seeing totally. like the real or, or looking at the uh, the like adult characters and and like <laughs> how young the actress is. Oh yeah, uh huh. And it's like, oh, oh you that's, put the that's freshman his, in the that's his mom. Role? <laughs> Yeah, when the dad is when yeah when the preacher is like shorter by like a foot than like everyone else, you're know, like this doesn't seem right. This, this doesn't is kind seem of weird. quite right. I don't know what something. I can't put my finger on it, but I'm not buying something about his performance. Look, they were yeah. they were casting fully on merit. Okay, so exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to point out that yes, the guy that did carry the musical, Dean Pitchford, um, a well-regarded Broadway um, lyricist and book writer, was behind this. So there there is some brass here, and he. I don't think the book and the lyrics are bad for the original pieces. Um, it's when we try to shoehorn some of the pop songs in that I'm like, oh, oh okay. But the pop songs were in the movie, right? Am I mistaken? Yeah, yeah there's about, I was looking that up, like about half of them. So in the, there were seven songs from the movie and six of them are made it into the musical. So you got Footloose, I'm Free, Let's Hear It For The Boy, Holding Out For A Hero, Almost Paradise, Somebody's Eyes. Those are all in the movie. The only one that was in the uh, movie that didn't make it to the musical was one called, I think it was called Dancing in the Sheets. And mm. it, it, that was one of the, I, I looked it up because I was like, why didn't they put this in the movie, you know, uh, the musical? And, there's a, and, and in the movie, there's seriously, it's like it's like a an American graffiti kind of scene, or like Dazed and Confused, where it's just them playing music at a diner and people are just kind of like moving their feet. And nothing like there's no story. <laughs> nothing is like pushing it forward at all. So I was like, okay, I guess I can see how you removed that one. But yeah, well, I, mean, I mean, they it's already two hours. I mean, we don't need any more. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe maybe a couple more could have fit in there. No, but... <laughs> we're, we're talking a lot about the surroundings of this musical and yeah. all that. We aren't talking about the plot, the characters, or oh, yeah, what. We got to get down to the nitty gritty. The very so, important Andrew, part of the show. I'm gonna, I'm going to ask you in as little words as possible, how would you describe the entire plot of this show? Yeah, I mean, I think you pretty much covered it. I mean, Ren is this new kid that moves in, and he falls in love with the rebellious daughter of the Reverend, who, like, runs the whole town, basically. He's just, like, this omnipresent authority figure that is, uh, he does everything. Even at one point, he, like, gets all of the town council to just do what he wants just by saying to do it. I guess. Um, so he, he's like the authority and he is banned dancing. Um, and they do a court case, which means that this is a true musical. There is a court case. Um, yes. Yep. Uh, and they have to um, try to repeal the ban on dancing. Um, and eventually they just convince the reverend by being like, hey, we just want to have some fun, you know? And then, yeah. <laughs> You're not mentioning like all the side characters. You're not mentioning Terry Vi. <laughs> they don't matter. <laughs> Excuse me. Man. Excuse me, sir. Uh, they matter Good in sir. like entertainment value, but the plot oh, okay. doesn't need them. They matter in that <laughs> every kid needed a role, but <laughs> it's a they fun ma- show. They matter like... because they're all from like broken families, and they made their yeah. found family. That's what I'm going to pull. I'm going to try and like, yeah. I'm going to throw it's, stuff in there that probably wasn't meant to be there. It's really so good. You do video essays or something. It exactly. feels like you're pretty good yeah, at yeah. this. I can just talk out of my butt, this sir. Plot together. Can, yeah. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> Let's give the people what they want. Some more footloose. Come on. I, I, I love the premise of a ban on dancing. It is the most absurd, like satire of the like, uh, what is it like moral panic culture of the 80s yeah um i mean you think it's absurd but seriously bible belt that stuff exists i, I yeah i mean i, I wouldn't be yeah. i would not be shocked if there was a ban on dancing somewhere in america <laughs> yeah i mean it's so wild to even think like yeah i mean because i grew up in, in the church and like in that kind of southern baptist where it's like yeah like don't go swimming in, like, in a pool with like an opposite gender. And like, I grew up in a, in a, I grew up like in a, in a dry County where like you couldn't buy alcohol. Like they didn't serve alcohol in the city limits. 
Uh, and so it seems wild, but as, as I think it's like that extra stretch of like another thing that feels believable enough, maybe in some kind of small town where then, yeah, like the pastor or reverend well, yeah. or whatever is like the authority figure and like the, the police and everything, or, or at least has the police in his pocket in some way or another. He, he's got everybody in his pocket, like the whole town council. Like, I mean, I, I want to say that they couldn't even come up with a really good argument for repealing the ban on dancing. Ren just kind of goes up there and he's like, the Bible has dancing in it. Dancing it's killed my daughter, <laughs> for one. That it's is like, th the best and worst song of the entire musical. I cannot wait <laughs> to talk about that song for 30 minutes when we get to it. Because that oh, song God. is the cringiest song that I had to perform in. And yes, oh, it is my bad. God. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to go back to your production. What was it like? Like... I hope because you say you came from like a conservative leaning like area and putting on Footloose, uh, this isn't like an edgy show, but it, it, it it's a little spicy for high school. It could be edgy production. if you're in that area. I mean, if if it's making fun of that culture, I don't know. Oh my god, this was so much fun in comparison to like the year before we did Annie Get Your Gun, and. <sighs> I mean, I guess I like it because again, I like it because like I've heard it a million times because you're in it. But that one is like when you're high school kids and you just want to kind of like have some music you actually kind of somewhat enjoy. Andy, get your gun, and you want to put butts in the seats. No one was running to come see Andy, get your gun in the school except <laughs> like our parents who were forced to come watch us because we're their kids. But so so going from that to Footloose felt like oh man, we've all heard of Footloose for for the most part. You know, Kevin Bacon and this actually has some kind of like decent music that might be fun to like dance to 80s kind of vibe. We can kind of dress up 80s a little bit. And it had a lot bigger cast because like in shows like Andy Get Your Gun, you have like one or two or three main characters. And then everyone else maybe has two words, they say. Yeah. And everyone else is just chorus <laughs> and doesn't really do anything. But it felt like with this one, there was a, a, a lot of characters had like one song. There were like two or three big leads, but a lot of other moments sprinkled throughout and a lot of we had uh, dancers in the background. So it felt like a lot more opportunity just to have a big crew of people who actually enjoyed putting on the show. And again, I don't know if like, I, I think you're right. Full loose isn't the, the wildest thing you can do. But yeah, certainly in Bible Belt High School. I mean, we had to like we couldn't say a lot of like the words that or not a lot of the words, but like certainly in high school. I mean, I don't know what kind of high school you went to, but we couldn't like say curse words. So a few of the curse words we had to, you know, replace with other stuff. But all that saying, like it still was like super fun at the time, especially compared comparatively to what we were doing or used to doing in the school, if that makes sense. That makes complete sense. And I, I can see the excitement behind that. And this musical feels like it's made for a high school like uh, or high school productions because of how giant the cast is, how everyone kind of has their moment to shine. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, as well as there are some actual good belty numbers as well as some fun bouncy rock numbers where people could put things in their reels, but they could also like just have some fun and dance around a bit. Yeah, and exactly. And, and, and there's like three or four songs in here that like, that have transcended, obviously, the musical. They just, like, are in pop culture now. Like, yeah. just Footloose and Let's Hear It for the Boy and what's the other one that's, like, yeah. huge? Holding Out for a Hero. I mean, those are ones yes. you'll just hear, like, at, at a bar or in the restaurant or some in the background. So those are just songs that people know. So you get, helps put butts in the seats to a certain degree also. Mm -hmm. I just remember when Holding Out from a Hero came on, Andrew texted me, like, I, they ripped off Shrek 4, Shrek 2. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said that they are ruining the ending of Shrek 2. <laughs> <laughs> because the performance that we watched, they did not do a very good job with that song. <laughs> I don't think she was that bad. I'm not sure I agree with like its use in the musical as a plot point. Like it's in reaction to like I need a real man, and I, that that song feels a little too badass to just be like I would need a real man if that makes sense. What? Yeah. So wait, holding out. Wait, you're talking about like holding out for a hero, or let's hear it for the boy. Holding out for a hero. Holding out for a hero. What? Ha holding so what happened? What happened in your production? Because I'm even trying to think about what happened in ours. I think it was just we just had the girls standing there and singing, but like nothing was like happening on the stage. I wonder what it was like they, paired with for you guys. They were singing, and then they had some like backup singers come in, and they were dancing behind them. Yeah. Um. But the it was really the singing wasn't like it was a little bit pitchy. 
It sounded oh, yeah. like they were trying to reach for the notes. It's and a they high schooler, my high friend. School, yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. I'm really, I'm just trying to criticize, give constructive criticism here. For, uh, what <laughs> Yo, was your dog, name? I wrote it down here bitchy. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that 16 year old has no future on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> then five years later, she's on our show, Andrew. And then it's like, I, I heard you talk shit about my f- footloose performance. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You were pitchy, though. But you were a little pitchy. <laughs> you took my advice, I see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone, yeah, when you when you start reaching, when when you need, like, 16 or 17, 18 people who sing, who can sing in a high school, you're going to, it's going to start getting a little rough. Once you start get past, like, the top three or four, it's going to start getting, for sure, pitchy and awkward. Or maybe they can sing, but then they can't act. Or they can act okay, but then they're terrible at singing. That's always kind of the give and take kind of things with high school productions. And I will say, watching it at a high school production is probably much more entertaining than watching, like, a professional production of this, to be honest, because kids are just so much fun to watch perform this. I listened to the original Broadway cast after watching the high school production we watched, and I'm like, y- y'all are just taking this too seriously. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> the kids were obviously it would just be having a so blast. bland as, like, a professional, because yeah. there's, not, there's not that much going on in it, and it's like... You could have some fun, and I could see going and having some fun with it, but... They got cowboys. We got a, a whole cowboy plot. Come on. And this does. This really does feel like a put this on at your high school show, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it makes sense because you, you, you need people, you need kids who are, like, interested and, like, actually want to sign up to do it. But when you have such a big, monstrous cast like that, because we had a big cast, but also, like, the, like I said, like, the chorus, and then we also had dancers... And you know that they're pa- they're going to bring their parents to come see it, and so you're getting a lot of because they have to you, yeah. the guilt the guilt is is baked right in. So they you're going to get yeah, if, well, we had we had three we put on three shows and they were all sold out, and we went to a pretty decent sized high school. Not that that's saying anything to how good the show was overall, but just it, kids want to come see something I called mean, Footloose. Just, uh, send us the tape. We'll take notes and uh, oh, we can send it back to you. <laughs> I do want to point out the way out that you're bashing why... these other high schools. I don't even want to hear what you say about me. Oh, good lord! I'm so glad I didn't offer up that for you guys to watch. <laughs> I wish, I wish you had. I'm not uh, gonna lie. I would have been like, much we could have all like, reviewed oh, yeah. that. Oh man, it that, that, that would have that given... would have made me even more red in the face than I already am. I would have been like beet red. You would have melted. <laughs> yeah, so totally. I totally would. I do want to point out another reason why this is great for high school productions, which a lot of uh, Broadway shows tend to forget, is there's not a lot of guys that tend to audition for plays, and most plays are 85% men in the leading roles. This has a lot of women in the lead in the ensemble and given good, significant roles. Um, not that there aren't a lot of dude roles, but you could probably slide a girl into the, one of the more dude-centric roles and kind of fit him in there and change the gender bend the casting which is also something i really want to praise about this i think this is there is nothing about this that doesn't work for high school and community theater this is great yeah it really yeah so again that's why i love this i'm not sure i want to go run and sit like front row on broadway to see footloose the musical no would you pay two hundred dollars to see this (laughs) uh man with the nostalgia tied to it maybe but probably not probably not but again that's me because i know all these songs and i genuinely think like i like all of these songs like even like you'll have some musicals that are i mean there might be one or two that if you're listening to it you might obviously want to skip but i i like all of these songs i feel like there's some even like the kind of slower ones they still are pretty catchy and i'm sure again they have a lot some of them have some decent i might be reaching here but some decent emotion tied to them that if i weren't watching a high school performance and you know, a 16 year old trying to process the death of his son, uh, imaginary son, as opposed to like a grown up, maybe might be able to pull it off better, but (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what you guys thought. I like all of these songs. It's time for us to actually compare our opinion on just these high school production to the opinion of the New York elite. (laughs) It is time for us to compare our opinions with those of the theater critics. When this show came out, it is time for previews. It's time for previews. It's time for previews. 
Okay, so New York Times' Ben Brantley said of the original 1998 production, in Footloose, the flavorless marshmallow of a musical that opened last night at the Richard Rogers Theater, this righteous minister of a small-town church spends most of the show fretting over the dangerous consequences of rock and roll, something he describes as an endless chant of pornography. I would say that's a stretch. A flavorless marshmallow. Man. He came out he came out firing right from the first sentence. All right. All right, Bree, continue. Uh, there have certainly been worse musicals on Broadway than Footloose. Mm -hmm. The sixty five or six point five million adaptation of the hit uh 1984 movie that starred Kevin Bacon. Yet, um, it, it's hard to think that one of it, one of one, so totally unaffecting. The musical, or the music, wow, I am butchering this, guys. Okay, the music is this show is loud for sure with a pr uh, propulsive beat designed to set toes tapping and fingers snapping. The score is peppered with flashy dance tunes from the movie uh, that have boomed over disco floors for years. And there's a young, disco eager... Floors. Yes, <laughs> disco Wait, floors. Disco in the, disco in the How... eight, mid-80s, but well, all right. He was writing this in 1998. Yeah, okay. yeah. Ben Brantley did not have his pulse on the zeitgeist, is what we're saying. <laughs> not at all, no. Um, yeah, so boomed on disco floors for years. Um, and there's a young, eager, hardworking cast of dancers somersaulting, backflipping, wriggling to the beat to beat the band. The characters have been built up, but in the wrong ways, with emphasis on insights out of pop psychology books and very little of the detail that defines personality. Woof. Uh, <laughs> as played by Mr. Bacon and Laurie Singer in the movie, Ren and Ariel projected a sullen, smoldering quality. You can imagine they're exploding in dangerous ways. The film in which they appeared might have been on the square side, but its young stars were undeniably cool. Mm. Okay, so he is praising the movie right there. He likes I'm the assuming. movie. He likes, the, right. movie. He likes the movie, but All the right. musical is a flavorless marshmallow. <laughs> Any grit and spunk that belonged to Footloose the movie, which was silly but kind of satisfying, has been bleached and sanitized out of existence. When a character sings about letting my mind take a small walk, when small town life becomes too oppressive to, to bear, it's the only moment in the show when you fully identify with someone on stage. Yeah, and that's all he had to say on that. <laughs> all right. Is he saying at the end there that you identify with them on the stage because you want your mind to leave, like to take a small walk? Because you don't yeah, want to be watching the show. Yeah, that is what he's saying. Because okay. he just, that's his backward ass way of saying, like, I just didn't want to be there. I, I have better things to do. I'm Ben Brantley. Sounds like a big fan of the movie, though. Sounds like he's a big Kevin Bacon <laughs> fan. I mean, it was silly, but kind of satisfying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I put that on the poster. <laughs> Um, so that was 1998. Do we agree with that? I feel like even at its worst, I can't agree with that. It's just so harsh. It's yeah. like, it's just a fun show. I mean, I could understand saying like that you didn't like it that much, but this is just mean. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's like an argument was kind of like Kevin Bacon and them made it seem like dancing dangerous and cool. But the movie is hokey as hell, too. Like, it's 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 cheesy. It's kids who are, like, expressing themselves through, like, just dance into, like, 80s synth music. I mean, yeah, it's just supposed to be, like, dancing and having fun. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny that he would be like, oh, the movie nailed it, but the musical didn't. When a lot of yeah. those, if you want to call them deeper issues, are definitely, like, in both of the, in the movie and musical. That, like, what deeper issues is Footloose covering? Like, the, yeah. the actual difficult subject of whether or dancing, not dancing kill should my be son, banned. Andrew. <laughs> like, <laughs> ben Braley like, doesn't like anything fun. No. He really doesn't. No. What was the other really negative one he wrote? It was like that Legally Blonde. Legally he called Blonde. It, he told it called it like garbage bubblegum or something. Bubblegum gummy bear trite. <laughs> but I'm sure he loves but but he's because he's, he's a huge movie fan. He loves the movie so much. That's why. And you can't beat the movie, that's why. Oh yeah, it was just a terrible adaptation. I'm sure that's what it was. <laughs> But then he gives, like, a glowing review to Spongebob the Musical, which I think is good, but I don't know where to put him. You can't but grab him. He's like, how about we jump? 
nearly 20 years later to uh, 2017 when we got a UK touring production. And what do they got to say about that, Bria? 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 Who the fuck is that? (laughs) Bria? What? (laughs) Okay. Sweet, sweet Greg Stewart of the UK's Theatre Weekly said of the original 2017 UK touring production, the musical version of that iconic 80s movie Footloose has stopped off in London during its UK tour for a limited run at the Peacock Theatre. Filled with plenty of well-known tunes and a tendency not to take itself too seriously, this is the perfect way for audiences to lose their blues and kick off their Sunday shoes. Oh, yeah. He gets it. This guy gets it. <laughs> this is what all UK reviews of every like jukebox musical in existence sounds like, though. It was Love the it. best thing ever. <laughs> yes, the UK gets it. <laughs> the, p- <laughs> the plot will be familiar to anyone who has seen the movie that helped launch the career of Kevin Bacon. After being abandoned by his father, Ren McCormick and his mother leave Chicago to live with his aunt and uncle in a small town of Beaumont. Ren struggles to fit into his new home despite making friends with a dim-witted cowboy (laughs) named Willard and finding a love (laughs) interest in Ariel. Do you take personal offense to that? No, not at all. I love it. I love it. (laughs) No, that's the character, right? Yeah, man, the the idiot goofball characters are fun to play. While that elusive, convincing American accent proves a struggle for some of the cast. (laughs) Oh, I didn't think about that. Oh, so they were cast by, by Brits? They're trying to do a honky talk accent, and that was not coming across. All right. (laughs) It's an easy problem to overlook given the sheer energy uh, being blasted from the stage. Footloose the musical is the very definition of feel good. Uh, Racky Plews has yet again directed a fantastic piece of musical theater which permeates deep into the audience's hearts and along with a first class performance from (laughs) Joshua Dowen makes this guaranteed to help you (laughs) cut loose and get your feet and relish every moment four stars (laughs) oh my god I need this review framed and Opposite reviews. We'll send it over. Don't worry. Thank you. It's like Thank the, you. The most negative possible, and then like, this is the greatest show ever put on, except that's, for the American accent. That's the only problem. Yeah, that's that's true. where I think our cultures divide the most. If you want the honest opinion, this is where we. This is why Brexit happened. Footloose the musical. Wait, I, I hope I not. <laughs> well. I, I think we all agree with that second one. It is goofy camp. I don't know if I'd go quite as like glowing I don't think on it. I would be as glowing, but you know what? He's passionate, and I'll I'll take it. It's fine. I think so much <laughs> about it's just like setting expectations. What are you going into? Exactly. What is this? It's a movie about dancing being illegal, illegal, and they have to dance their way to freedom. Like, what do you want it to be? Come on. Like, that second guy yeah. kind of got it. It's like, hey, what do you want? Do you want to tap your toes and kind of have some, like, memorable songs that you can sing along with? There you go. And it's short and sweet. You get out of there. It's like, what are reviews for? So this, you're going to see a review of the Footloose musical, right? And you're like, man, I wonder if I should go see this. I want to see the Footloose musical. What is it good? Like, and you read this Ben Brantley one, and it's like, he doesn't even understand what Footloose is. He's like, oh, if you liked the movie, you'll hate this. It's like, but it's yeah. the same thing. <laughs> like, I, I don't understand. Unless you expected like, Kevin Bacon to roll in there for the for the performance. Like, yeah, it's the same I, thing. It's like, I don't understand, like, how you can come out with such a negative review of a pretty decent adaptation of the movie. Because you're Ben Brantley, and that's what you do. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, I was expecting high art. It's like at least the second guy is like, "Oh, you you want to see the Footloose thing? Well, yeah, this is this is it." It's like, yes. "Yeah, they didn't they yes, didn't screw Footloose it up." As you get. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, how about we go into a mid-show interruption and then we talk about some songs. Let's yeah. do it. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt you in the middle of the show, but we've got a shill at you! Today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon. Andrew, what's Patreon? Oh, Patreon's where you can go if you'd like to donate to us to help us keep the show running. We also have extra content on there for our donors, like uh, commentaries on 
the Annie movies and the Tom and Jerry Wizard of Oz and I, I don't know a bunch of other stuff. And you um, know. we're gonna do the Rent movie sometime soon. Rent um, movie that'll be fun. Probably sometime. Yeah. Yeah, and you also get the full live streams of everything we've done, um, not the edited versions, the full unedited ones. And you can see our faces right now. Um, you can see what Adam's wearing, and it's a wonderful Hawaiian shirt. Oh my god! Oh, he's doing backflips. He's do oh, he's dancing he's the full loose the dance. Place. Oh my goodness! You know, I, I see right on the tip of his lips. He he just wants to say this. He just wants to say, join the join them on Patreon. You you have to. He just really wants to say it. I can see him wanting to say it. Whatever they say, I agree to. Do it. Do he it now. He did it. That's close enough. <laughs> this is the first. This is the most a guest has pushed back for this. There is not a. There is not a gun to my head right now. I agree. Do it. <laughs> and if you had Patreon, you would be able to see that we are definitely not yes, holding a gun. to his head. we are definitely not holding any guns to his head at this moment. Um, but our current patrons are Melissa Goldman, Terry Needleman, John Donna, Leighton Knuckles, Danielle Renix, Jess Stampede, Ewan Casty, Task Gear, Fire, September, Monica Thoreau, Mina Maniri, Brent Black. Haley Murray, Lathaniel, Stacey Coom, Robert Benjamin, Rachel T, Jessica T, Genevieve Hartnett, Cass, Mitchell Young, Chai Teacup, Hayden Wilder, Katie McDonough, Joseph Evans Green, Carrie Hearn, Mary Lou Choquette, Val John Van Alles, Heck You, I Go by Elijah Now, Russ Walker, Musical Hell, Emily Gracie, Andrew Van Bar, Sin, Tablam, Kyle Summers, Jen AC, Christina Francis, Timothy Keys, Jeffrey Machado, Jacques, Toon Van Essen, Jesse Taylor, R. Elliott, Chris Marcotte, Katie Turberg, Me Moo, Scoot in the Technicolor Dreamcoat, Felice R., Liz Lim, Allison Stuller, Nothing is certain except Beth and Taxes, John Vanals, Thesbian, Ren Cullen, Wait in the Wings, Spectral Machine, Jacob Stroop, Rafael Martinez Salaz, Kiji, Marie Anastasio, Trevor Lopez, Sierra Moncrief, Leala, and RJ Norija. They give us a little extra financial support, helps us keep Brie paid, and we love paying Brie. It's one of my favorite things to do every month. Um, so you should join us on Patreon so we can live healthier. And also, after our 150th, you're going to see where a lot of your Patreon money has been going into. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty exciting. Brie and Andrew know what it is. I I'm kind of pumped about it. Um, so hopefully you're going to see it. Uh, but let's get back to the show. <laughs> I guess we have to start on the classic song, which is Footloose, because we got to cut loose, Footloose, put on your Sunday shoes. It's a it's a good song. It's basically a pop song at this point, and uh, they performed it okay in the one I saw. I'm assuming in the UK they probably perform it better. <laughs> Except the accents. Except the accents. The accents really Guys, drag the whole give... thing down, but... Give the people what they want. <laughs> they want Footloose. You give them Footloose. And that's what they do. Right out of the gate. Rock them some Kenny Loggins. You're not not a second wasted. We are uh, like, honestly, uh, I was surprised that that was the opening because I was like, <laughs> man, wouldn't, wouldn't they want to hold this off till later? But you know what? No, no. Everyone's there to see this. So just give it to them. It's fine. I'm fine with it. They well they Yeah, but they don't really give it to you again until the end. Yeah, that's true. They, they, they bookend it for sure. But they have to, yeah, it is weird. I guess I was thinking like they, they come out of the gate strong, in my opinion, Footloose, mm -hmm. and they have to shove so much exposition and like so much happens in this song that I think is merged with another song that goes on for about nine minutes or something like that. <laughs> yes. It's a long <laughs> intro that gives you like every single character for the most part and the dynamics of what's going on. So it's, it's a weird hybrid of like Footloose and let's, we have to give a lot of exposition to let's not bore them. Let's let's pepper it in amongst Footloose. So they're dancing kind of to it. I guess. It, yeah, I guess it kind of works. It works fine. I mean, it's it's not a bad intro to the show. Um, I like that. It's you know, it's in his old town and you get to 
see that his friends don't even know where it is or anything like that, where he's going, the uh, new town. It's a good setup. Where the heck is spot. Beaumont? Is that what they say? <laughs> or where the, oh, where the hell they probably say, we said heck. Couldn't say hell oh, yeah, on you stage. Can't be, you can't be bringing out the hell up on stage. No, not in no, our town. Not in what town. the frick is a Beaumont? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of really clunky exposition in this where the mom's like, your father left us and I am an old minstrelly woman. <laughs> and you... <laughs> <laughs> you know all of this information. You know how long we've been not working at it. And we have to move to your uncle's house. The audience doesn't know, but you but know. You know. Because <laughs> I know I have a lot of conversations where I tell Andrew facts that he already knows. Oh, just, yeah. I mean, of Andrew, course. you know we do a podcast. I, I do know that, in fact. <laughs> it's just so crazy. It's so wild how, like, you're, you have Footloose, and then it really, like, just breaks your neck as it turns and you're in a different town and now you're boom now you're listening to a sermon so you go from footloose right to like <laughs> yes. boom now you're now you're in the house of god and so you're just like whoa you just merge those <laughs> in together and it flows okay after you kind of get used to the turn uh-huh I guess it depends on, again the version that you watched it was pretty pitchy in my version so maybe it didn't work <laughs> oh, as well no. <laughs> I I feel like the preacher character, the reverend character, is one of the few like performers in our version that really sold it. So I was like, I, all right, I'm into it. Was that like? It felt like that was one of the teachers or something stepping in. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> <laughs> because he maybe was just that good. But but I remember just like, oh, he he's selling it. It might have been like they wanted the reverend to look like an authority figure, so they had to like get an actual adult to play it. I don't know. All right, Mr. Randall, step in for the day. Jared's <laughs> sick with monomia. <laughs> I've seen that in some shows. I guess, I mean, I feel like I've seen that in our high school, too. If it's like a line or two, but it's really hard to have like a faculty member be there for like that much extra work, getting paid yeah. like nothing. <laughs> uh, so, but that w it would help. It really does. It really does make it hard when like, the parents and or the adults and the kids are the same age and sometimes even flip flopped and makes it hard to kind of break through that level of like di disbelief or whatever. I mean, the way it happens all the time in like high school theater because you know the upperclassmen get the better roles, which are usually the kid roles, and the underclassmen get given the B roles, which are always the parents. So it's like these <laughs> behemoths, like children point. talking to their ch small, small children. That is parents. a really, really good point, and and very accurate to how mine went. So it's a great point. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hard to not like think like oh my god I, I, you can't just cast who's best for the role it's like well it's his last year and he's never had a lead so we're putting nine foot tall Johnny here and we're putting four foot three Alice as his mom <laughs> I mean, that's that's scarily accurate that to how you describe me. I am, I am six and a half feet tall. I, I'm six and a half feet tall. And I have like a freshman. I was a senior and my fresh. The freshman is like the angry principal or like the gym teacher <laughs> kind of douchebag. And you're just like, you're supposed to feel like reprimanded when they come up to your waist. And you're like, all right. <laughs> all right. What song should we talk about next? Um, I plan on talking about all of them. The girl oh gets around. Oh my god. I got Let's no go. I got notes on all these things. The girl gets Let's around. Let's go. Well, she'd like you to think she was born yesterday with her innocent looks and her little town away. When she's smiling at me, she's got angels in her eye. But I've seen how she moves, and this girl really cooks. She taught me some tricks you can't learn in books, and I'm starting to think she's a devil in disguise. Very troublesome in many ways and whatever, and not, 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 not very good in some ways. Uh, let's let shame this little girl. Yeah, <laughs> this high schooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made that note that it does feel very weird. I mean, especially old and when being like I'm in my mid thirties now, and you're like, okay, let's about these about these kids like having sex. Basically, I guess this girl gets around and whatever, and they're supposed to be like in high school, probably minors. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of strange. Uh, it's a yeah, bit that of a feels weird. Weird song to put in this spot too, like it's a song about this other character when we still haven't gotten the leads song yet. 
That's a good point. Um, I do want to bring up that in the Wikipedia description, which is taken from the actual MTI description, it says Chuck and Ariel are only together for the sex, which that line alone, like that <laughs> sentence alone Yikes. bothers me Yikes. for like a musical about high schoolers. I'm like, you can't be just together for the sex as a high schooler because I just, I don't like that idea in my head. Please yeah. stop. Well, yeah. it's there now, so it's sorry. there. <laughs> and it They're will just together be there. for the sex. <laughs> yeah, so that's so that's Fucking strange. Chuck. But again, like just song alone, if I was like had that on the back of the radio, oh, I don't know, radio that might be a reach. But like kind of listening to it, like the song is like pretty catchy. I still like that song. It is a catchy song. Um, the one that I think is my favorite in this um, is the two songs after that. Um, somebody's eyes yeah. i really really like the melodies in that think a naughty thought and if you get caught well then boy you boy a lot of trouble somewhere there's someone with the perfect view you and they're just dying for a little peek a boo somebody's eyes are watching Somebody's eyes will never close, never sleep. Somebody's after the secrets that we Who's got alibis from somebody's eyes? And even when I saw these high school girls that weren't like nailing the song, I'm like, this is probably sounds gorgeous when you have professionals singing it. It's like this. It's a strangely like dark kind of Mm -hmm. sullen song for what it's trying to say. Yeah, I I, it feels so weird, but but I totally agree. I mean, somebody's eyes like legitimately is like a good song. It seems like I feel like I have like to defend Footloose the musical sometimes me and that UK that UK uh, critic. We're the ones trumpeting and, this musical. You and all of uh, all of the UK. Are me and, the, me and my UK an brethren. Uh, somebody's eyes, ben like, and... somebody's eyes, is a good, <laughs> it's a good song, and it really reminded me because you hear it kind of peppered throughout. It feels like those three girls are kind of like a Greek chorus, kind of sometimes, yes. like in the background, just kind of observing the town and commenting on all of these like terrible things that are happening in the town. That's one of those ones that gets caught, uh, that gets like stuck in my head every time I watch it. It's like it's a good song. Yeah, it was uh, deceptively like because I'm like I'm not expecting to like this because we we have I can't stand still, which is also the closest thing we have to an I want song for Ren. And I'm like oh, I was fine, and then you have this deceptive song that I'm like oh yeah. I didn't expect a song that sounds like this this early mm-hmm. into the show, um, and I was just so pleasantly surprised and so enthralled by it. It's another one of those songs that has to carry a lot of weight, like expositionally, like the opening one. Yes. I feel like that's, isn't that where he's just like getting abused left and right by like the the gym teacher and the other students, like the bullies or whatever. And there's a lot in nobody there. Nobody likes him. Yeah, nobody likes him. Even his own family doesn't seem to like him very much. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a great song. And oh, I don't want to skip around too much. Um, learning to be silent. Do you have stuff to say about that? I'm... Becoming a mime Biting my tongue Biting my tongue Trying not to scream Managed it before Knowing if I'm going to survive Then damn it I've got to practice Another, I mean, for, because again, there's the certain songs that always happen in musicals where like you have like the, the rock and roll, high energy songs. It's like, okay, we got to bring it down a little bit because they can't all be, you know, at tens, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like even that song is like good. It's short. It doesn't like overstay its welcome. And the, again, it's so hard judging it based on like, I've, I haven't seen an actual like performance of this besides my own <laughs> high school. And this is one, like the two women who sang the song, like nailed it. And I thought they did a really good job with it. And uh, so I don't know, it's hard, it's hard judging a musical based on what the performance that you happen to see. But yeah, I think it's a good song. I love how the end when it's like, when they hum the end part, 
the melody as they're trying to be silent and close their mouth as they hum it out. I like that. That was good. <laughs> Plus, they kick it back into high gear again with holding out for a hero. Oh, oh yeah, they yeah. Do. yeah, they do. Which I don't, I don't know if I understand why this song was here entirely. Yeah. Um, well, because she's sick of Chuck being a being a little fuck boy, so she's <laughs> holding out for like a good guy. Um, where have she, all the good men gone? And that that literally is the only reason why the song was there. Yeah, um, that and like people know it, so it's like. Let's go. Yeah, it's it's one of those. Yeah, it feels like I think even in the movie, I can't recall where they put this song in in the movie, but I'm pretty sure it's just like in the background, as like in the car as they're like driving around. I, I could be wrong about that. So in here, it feels very much like okay, people like this song. This is a good song. Now, how do we fit it into the story somewhere? Okay, how about they're just upset about the guys in the town? Okay, we'll put it there. So, yeah, I, I agree. It feels very <laughs> surfacey about how they put it in here at this time. But again, it's a great song, so I'm not going to get too angry about it. Because, like, okay, yeah. Especially, like you said, coming after learning to be silent. They needed to, like, crank it up again and do another kind of, like, great song, which it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, they bought the rights to the movie, so they probably had the rights to all of the songs in the movie. So they're just like... Put as many in as we can. But there's also the audience expectation of like, I love the the soundtrack. I love listening to this soundtrack, Plus, if, so I want all those songs. If this song wasn't in there, the UK probably wouldn't defend this show nearly as much. <laughs> they would have rioted. I mean, I, I was looking at like when, when, I, when I was trying to figure out the songs that did make it and didn't make it from the movie. I was looking and like so many of the ones that made it were like number one or were charting at some point when like the soundtrack came out. Like a lot, that must have been a monstrous soundtrack when the 80s movie came out because all of those songs were hugely popular, I, I believe. Or if, if they weren't when they first premiered, they became so like later on in time. So yeah, you definitely got to put it in there somewhere because a lot of people know it. I agree. But are we ready to go into the dark world? We gotta invade the world of Shaw with heaven help me. I don't enjoy being her jailer. I don't relish telling her no. But then I think, what if I fail her? How can I just let her go? I strive to be a good preacher. I try not to go overboard. But then I think, if I can't reach her, how can I face my Lord? Heaven help me shoulder my load. Every day's a struggle. Still, someone's got to take the high road. If I don't, who will? Oh, oh my God. What did you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah, one yeah. moment where it kind of takes itself a little too seriously. Yeah, uh, yeah, Shut it's up. like it's like you have yeah. to build up. It's it's so hard because I feel like when you're watching Footloose, no one's like, "Man, I can't wait to like watch the Reverend and do his part." Like you're there for the kids. I love the Reverend. He's my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like if you watch Dirty Dancing, and I'm like, I love Baby's Dad. Exactly. It's like no one's no one's buying no one's buying tickets to go see the Reverend. But like to do a good story, you gotta like, and and it's so weird because he's like the antagonist, but it's not like a evil mustache twirling kind of antagonist. It's just like a misguided one in many ways and abusing they power. They want you to obviously. see it that way, anyways. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say, he's pretty close to evil, in my opinion. Like, the way he treats his daughter, like, sickens me to a point where I'm like, you're evil, but in a more, a different way than, like, a villain. Yeah, I can, and I can totally see that for sure. I, I think you, you gotta humanize him somehow a little bit, and I think... And that's why this song is here. <laughs> and that's why, and, that, and that's why the song is here, because you need to have some, you can't just be surface level i'm just evil for evil's sake and i hate children having fun <laughs> the idea is that it's like misguided and thinks like he's just afraid that he lost his kid and and doesn't want to lose his daughter but by doing so he's he's just making a lot of mistakes along the way obviously and so i mean i appreciate how they just don't paint him as the mustache twirler he, ob right. he obviously is making a lot of mistakes but they, they're attempting to humanize him and attempting to give us to give us some um, reason for why he's doing what he's doing, what you have to do. So I appreciate the song being here because you need that. Otherwise you're like, well, I just hate that character. And wh why is this even a storyline or you, I feel like you wouldn't get it, I guess. Otherwise. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, he's just not like random father figure. He has a purpose and a backstory. Do, like it's the meme of Jake Peralta from Brooklyn Nine Nine. Cool, cool motive, still murder. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool backstory, still a dick. Yeah. I think that's what I mean. I, I love again. If you haven't seen the movie, but like John Lithgow plays the Reverend in the movie, and obviously John Lithgow is amazing. But the, he does bring like humanity to the role. It's never supposed to be like I'm the evil Reverend and I hate kids again. It's supposed to be more. Nu- <laughs> you would hope. You would hope for a, a, a movie or a musical like this that it'd be more nuanced and uh, maybe it doesn't nail that exactly. I guess you have to like get that across. Like, all right, we have one song. To, to summarize yeah, this one. guy's whole internal struggle about being broken and lost of faith, kind of, or struggling with faith. So, they tr- they tried. Maybe it didn't succeed, but... It does. It's only one song. It's not like they go overboard. It's probably... It's not the Shaw show. It's like, a, yeah. yeah not the sh- and, and, and like I said earlier, this is probably one of the two songs that are like, okay, you want to skip it? Okay. Like, on, on a re-listen, <laughs> like, I could... All right, I'm, I'm skipping this song. So I get it. Oh, this plot song? Oh, giving me Let's Hear It for the Boy. Let's hear it for the boy. <laughs> <laughs> A song about how your dancing killed your child? Oh, let's boy. hear it for the boy. <laughs> Boo, give me the fun stuff. Nothing real. Yeah. Um, so let it, how about we do hear it for the boy? Um, what do we think of that number by Rusty? I mean, I'm a big fan of like the bromance moments, and this is definitely a bromance moment. I love. Oh yeah, I yes. love that those kind of storylines of like the the two guys and they got to help each other out and being goofy along the way. I mean, it's just it's so easy and done so many times. But I mean, I love that. It's, it's an easy it's an easy win for me, and uh, it's a good it's a, I mean it's a good song. It's, it's another big pop song. I mean, it's it's good. It's, I mean, it's fun. It's a great way to open act two. And I know it's like the second song, but it like is the one that gets you settled. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh-huh. right, it's the real opener. The, I don't know. The other one. <laughs> oh, the one that one when they're in the country bar and that yeah. they're singing yeah. as we're walking around. Yeah, that's definitely like a, I don't think I took even a note on that one. That's definitely like a just setting the mood kind of song. They can easily be skipped. But, exactly. but, but yeah, this song is great. I mean, because I, I think this song works really well in two ways. And I guess, again, it would maybe depend on the production, but you have, uh, what's the woman's name? Is it, is it Rusty? Is that the one who's singing this? Rusty. You yes. have Rusty kind of doing her thing and her moment with the girls and they're doing the, their thing. And then on the other side of the stage or however it's laid out, you have the guys kind of doing their moment too and, and learning how to dance and that kind of moment. So it's one of those like, really oh, yeah. easy, just like a fun, a fun song to watch while you're doing it. Uh, both sides kind of getting to... Uh, work hand in hand tangentially kind of with to their to their stories incredible um i i agree uh, but now we gotta talk about your big moment mama says oh man skipping can you find it in your heart oh, such a beautiful song but okay i'll go to mama says <laughs> oh you want to talk about the ballads i i, I was like ah! <laughs> uh I, I mean for real quick can you find it in your heart i mean it's another one that yes. you could probably skip but it's again you're building you're trying to build up you're building up the the emotion of the if you have no emotion it's just like kids dancing for like no purpose and i thought it was uh, right. i thought you it was good. A good point i thought it was a good song it's a good song it's and again, I feel like in some musicals, it's like absolutely 100% of the time, fast forward, skip, oh God, I'm going to go to the bathroom during the show or, or something. But man, the, the song is like good. And again, I feel like a lot of these side songs, it's like they're aware that like 
okay, they're not here for the adult storyline. This is kind of boring, but we got to have it in the story just so it makes sense. So let's make it like... It was the cheer up Charlie moment. Like, it, it's yeah. like, it's that is technically a great song. I'm sick of people being like, oh, cheer up Charlie sucks and Char- Willy Wonka the Chocolate Fan. No, that song's fine. It's just, it's about something a little too complex for kids to deal with. So all the kids fast forward. Yeah, but but they, they get in and get out. <laughs> the song is like a minute. Or a minute and a half. It's really short. And I think, I don't know, I wonder how you guys felt, but definitely rewatching it. um, I don't want to just call her the preacher's wife, but I don't have her name. Vi? Yeah, Vi. Yes. Yes. She is like secretly maybe like one of the best characters in this entire show. I agree. She's like the only level-headed adult who actually lets the kids like, she can kind of see where the kids are coming from and is trying to reconcile with like the husband and the daughter and keeping everything together and shutting the yeah. adults down when they're being douchebags at times. And so, yeah, I think she's one of like the secret MVPs of the entire show. So not a problem with her getting her song. The uh, glue holding everything together. So, I mean, she really kind of is. Yeah. And in, in a lot of ways. So love that song. But yes. And, and disrespected by literally everyone around her. It's like the yeah, worst. Yeah, that's a. That's a good point. Yeah, that, that's a that's a good point. But man, yeah, great. Like she's her. got a lot to deal with. Um, so yeah. But Mama says. Mama says. One, two, three. Mama says it doesn't matter if you drive a hard bargain or drive around town. Once, once you, you drive up a mountain, you can't back down. Once you. Yeah, I want to hear what you guys think of this song. Obviously, I'm biased because this was my song. I was about to say, you should have a lot of thoughts on this song. So this is your favorite song, right? <laughs> Man, it's not probably because this song is so goofy. <laughs> this song is so goofy. Uh, I love it. It's it's a very it, w- it was fun performing this song because you get like easy laughs in it. And nothing makes yeah. you feel better as a performer by doing like, oh, I fell over kind of something stupid. But if it gets a laugh, you feel like you're on top of the world and like you're crushing it. And there's a lot of those moments. <laughs> I mean, it's really easy. Uh, but before I have more thoughts, but I want to hear what you guys think. Coming in, you're never not knowing about this musical and you get Mama Says thrown at you. What were your thoughts? I, I, I actually had a... This is the one piece that I had heard outside of this musical. Um, where did you... 54... Yeah, where did you hear this it, song out of context? It was a 54 Below concert. Kevin Massey performed it. Um, really? And it was just this song in concert, like him singing it. And I was like, oh, this is a fun little number. Because I sometimes when I'm like doing work, they just play it. I'm like, oh, that was cute. Go back to my work. And then I hear it here. Oh, that's where this was from. Oh, so I had that history and seeing it in context i'm like oh this is even more fun great i think you pretty much nailed it like oh that's cute and fun move on that's kind of like what the song is it's a great cabaret number i'll say like performed in a vacuum it still works very well now what was it like performing that yeah yeah it it was it was really fun i mean what's what's hard again when you're casting high schoolers is like okay we need someone who can like act decently sing decently and can kind of dance and you basically didn't find anyone in our high school that could do all three really well. <laughs> and I could act okay. I could sing pretty decently too. Cause I was like, I was in choir and stuff like that. So I could sing okay, but man, dancing, I'm six, five and really lanky. And <laughs> so dancing, there was no, I am so ultra white. There was no good moves. There was no hip movement. So it's not like this is a kind of song that you, it's not <laughs> being you, white as a detriment. It's, 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 yeah, it's a true. pretty white song. It is, <laughs> it is very white hillbilly country bumpkin kind of song. But even then you're just like, you want to at least show that you can kind of move your feet a little bit. And I guess I could. Okay. But <laughs> that was the hardest part, but it was a fun song to sing. Like you, you mentioned earlier, I keep, we keep just referencing as opposed to like the actual Broadway show, or whatever we're just talking about, I love what we're talking about is high school versions and you're totally <laughs> right. And you're totally right. That like, once you start going down like the cast list, the singers get worse and worse. 
And so my guy <laughs> background dancers who were trying to do like the harmonies behind me were all like freshmen. I'm sure very nervous, obviously, you know, you're right. 15 and First they couldn't, they couldn't sing that well. So I don't think the song sounded oh, no. that great, just <laughs> harmony wise, uh, because the list of guys that could sing well was pretty short as compared to like the list of, of, of girls who could sing really well. But besides that, I mean, it was good. Me and like at, at the time, like my best friend actually was uh, Ren. So it was really fun. Just like our dynamic getting to play out on stage just with us, like being friends, like in real life and on stage and just be like idiots on stage together. Hopefully it made it feel a little bit more believable. I guess that's not a, that's not a note of us being good <laughs> actors. It's just like it was cool getting to act with your friend. So it, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it was a lot of fun. I think the song and I'm sure you guys well, maybe you guys agree it overstays its welcome at some point. I think it's the About second five minutes long, right? I think it's the second <laughs> longest song in the entire musical. It might be like six minutes long. Yeah. Five, something like that. It's a long song and you think it's over I, and then they come out again. I might've might skipped. A yeah. Little bit they, the song. <laughs> you think it's over and you're like, okay, that was kind of cute. And they're like, Oh no, we have a reprieve on it and they're going to come out again. Oh no, it's coming back. And another <laughs> verse that doesn't really add anything or extend it or shift it in a different direction. Well, it certainly just like, extends it. It well, extends <laughs> it, but it doesn't like add any, it doesn't like, yeah, change anything to the story of what was already done. So it's a long song, but it's just goofy and fun, and it's probably it's it's easy to get a laugh to probably entertain your your it's a uh, comic audience. relief song. And if it's, it's really funny, all you need, though. looking at the the track listing or track listing, the song listing or whatever around it, it's 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 around each side of it is can you find it in your heart in almost paradise? So I wonder if they were like, we need something kind of fun kids yeah. uplifting because we have like a sad adult song about their marriage breaking up. A, or, yeah. or just like family kind of falling apart and then you have almost paradise which is i guess supposed to be romantic but it's also like really sad in a lot of ways too about they're both being kind of you broken know, broken homes so i wonder if that's part of it probably also is romance like, is pretty sad sometimes <laughs> <laughs> it's true never lasts in my experience yes just like his parents relationship it's just like high school romance it doesn't last um <laughs> it's yeah uh, yeah, um, but Almost Paradise is probably my favorite song in the entire show. I thought that dreams belong to other men Cause each time I got close They'd fall apart again I feared my heart would beat in secrecy I faced the nights alone well, how could I have known that all my life I only needed you? Oh, almost paradise, we're knocking on heaven's door. Almost paradise, how could we ask for more? I swear that I can see forever. It, it felt like my, it, it. Also, I just tend to like the downers, so this was just kind of well, my is, vibe. And it's from the movie too, right? Or am I wrong about that? Yes. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, right. almost paradise was in the. It's in the movie also. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's so funny when I was watching it, and when I took a note down, my note was like probably one of the more like boring songs. But then after I was done watching it, I proceeded to sing that song for the next like four hours. Right. It's a very singable. <laughs> Like that song is still stuck in my head. It's a, it's a, it's a, so yeah, it, it might be a little kind of dull cause they're just kind of standing there singing to each other and they're both kind of like sad existences of their families or whatever, but it is a really uh, catchy song. I agree. And it's probably my favorite moment in it. Um, and then we kind of just ramp down the, the story is like, all right, we got to wrap this on up. <laughs> got, we got to undo the dancing laws real quick. Uh, so we can end with footloose again. Yeah. I mean, dancing is not it a crime. Much... Guys. Yeah, it isn't. <laughs> I need to hear your thoughts on this song. I... Um... <laughs> I'm going to Did force you the... your thoughts out of this song because this... Did you do the one where it was a rap? Oh, are there different versions? Yes. Um, in 2005, it was revised to remove the rap. 
Oh my gosh. I guess it was kind of a rap that we did. It was like, it starts, it's all acapella, right? There's, I mean, there's a little music in there, but it kind of starts off just like kind of thumping like the, the Bible as like a kind of a drum percussion and you're kind of singing and you're, yeah. and you're kind of like talking like this as you sing the song. Is that what they take? Is that what they mean by rap? Cause that's like the whitest yes, rap. Yes, that okay. is what they removed. Oh, they removed that. Oh, so they, there's, they removed the entire song or they just changed the arrangement of it. I think they changed the arrangement. Um, only the oh. very first section of the rap is used, and right before Mama says, instead of during the, oh, yeah, okay, so they remove that b- beats and put it in front of Mama says instead. Yeah. And then they just turned it into a full song. What? Oh, weird. Is that how it was in your version that you watched? Um, in our version, I think it was just, I, I remember it happening, but I don't remember it happening alongside the song proper. Yeah. If that makes sense. I don't remember it either. Oh, my God. So you guys don't know the but wait so there were the, wait so this song didn't exist in your version or is that what you're saying? Basically. Oh my yeah, god! Pretty the much. Full... There is the best. So you guys were, you guys were, we're uh, left out of the robbed of the best line in the entire musical. <laughs> like, like what is it? And, and I quote: "Dancing doesn't always make you do nasties. Look at the book of Ecclesiastes." Oh, Christ. You guys were robbed of that line. We were robbed. It is we the were best. If you, the, you at home right now, if you were robbed <laughs> of this song as well, of the rap that I guess it's called, you have to watch this song. Find Bree, it. Bree, play a clip of it right now. Play the clip of it right now. Right here in black and white as he was leaping and dancing with all of his might. Leaping, leaping and dancing, dancing in front of his lord. But David wasn't doing it for some reward. No. 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 It might sound odd, but David thought it brought him closer to God. So he would dance. Hallelujah. Every time he had the chance. Whatever the season or circumstance. He found a reason to throw a party in his pants and he'd dance. I say he would dance. So dancing doesn't always make you do nasties. Look at the book of Ecclesiastes. Okay. There's a time to laugh. A time to weep. Boo-hoo. There's a time to plant. A time to reap. And, and there's a time, time to dance. Yeah, it's on the soundtrack because I remember oh, that okay. line being Thank on the God. soundtrack. Please but it wasn't play the, the song, the part that I just played, because that is the cringiest, <laughs> lamest part in the entire musical, and I love it. <laughs> lamest. To death. I it's love it. To death. They revised it in 2005. <laughs> Trust us, we did not feel cool performing it. It was <laughs> lame. <laughs> I'm sure it was your parents' favorite part. Though. Yeah, probably. They're like, oh, wow, they're talking about scripture and dance. Yes. Jesus was okay with the dancing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys didn't watch this? I feel like we just need to pause this. And, yeah, I'm so glad that you, got, you, you played it in here because that needs to be heard. Oh, my gosh. I'm no, so glad you heard it. That is, it. That is some pretty terrible lyrics. It absolutely is. And I'm so sorry that you guys didn't get to hear it. If I sent you my version, you would have heard us do it. <laughs> you should have. I, I, part of me is really regretting. We should just scrap the episode and do that. And st- <laughs> wow, that is crazy. Oh, I don't oh. know we're already this far. Why do you think they <laughs> removed it? Did, did, you, did you see anything in your research about why they removed it? Did they think it was, I, mean, I don't know, offensive or, 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 or too la- offensive in its lameness? Yeah, I mean, I that think it was might just kind of a true. weird, a weird segment, you know. Honestly, it absolutely it like, is. Eh, that, that that doesn't feel right. Wait, so in, in your this moment? Okay, okay, then pause. Then, so what is when Ren is at the court hearing, or if that's what it was called? How does he convince them to allow them to dance? Like, what is his whole argument? He doesn't really. He just does a he does like a little speech where he's like the Bible yeah. dancing, and then that's it, and then they yeah. they just go. Nope. There's. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, all right. I guess they cut right to the. They went right to the voting, and and the reverend had all the votes already locked up. <laughs> oh man. Oh, there. Oh, you know what? I do remember the part before Mama says. Actually, yeah, because they he. Yeah, they put it before Mama they, says. They put it before it, and he does like this little rap, and there, and then all the kids are like, "Wow, that's terrible. They'll never that's be lame. convinced." Why would you do that? <laughs> that in a musical i wonder if they're like lampshading yeah. the fact that it used to be like his actual thing. Oh, okay okay that's interesting because like yeah I, I know what you mean because like in our song in our version we come out on stage and it's like okay ren well what do you what do you have so far is that kind of what it is like what do, yes. what do you have for pep yes. and i think and he, then just he says, does the rap okay in our version he just says something lame i wonder if it's the i wonder if it's switched with what you guys said uh, in your version but it was something along the lines of like um 
uh, you know, dancing's okay and, and whatever, and you know, dream big and party on. Like something that's supposed to be party on, like dudes. terrible. It's, okay, that's, up the and Ted. it's kind of like it's, it's supposed to highlight that like this is terrible. You need to like because then later, because then later, doesn't his mom give him the Bible? And it's, or no, no, no. Um, the uh, the Ariel does, doesn't she? Doesn't Ariel like give him the Bible? And it's like here are the notes. Look at this to to write your speech, and you gotta you gotta consult the scripture. That's the only way to kind of like get through to my dad. You look at scripture. That's not in your version. No. I, every wow. thing you say wow, that wow, you bring wow, up wow, kind wow, of makes wow, me wow. be like, did I even watch this show? Wow, this wow, is like wow, a different wow. show. <laughs> no, yeah, crazy. he comes out before Mama says, and they're like, "What do you got so far?" He just does the rap. Yeah, and just like, kind of that was like, terrible. Like, oh, and so they don't they don't sing with him because when they do it in the core with us, no. like we sing with him as like his background dance as singers. Oh and, man, oh, they immediately wow. shut him down. Like, wow, that think, sounds terrible. Maybe I think that's they're, why like, lampshading it. They're like, maybe. yeah, this was a really bad idea that this song exists. Like, let's make fun of the song in the show. They were like, <laughs> okay, this American this American critic blasted us. We need to remove this song, <laughs> and once we do, the UK audiences will love us, and that's why they did because they must they must have removed it, and the UK audiences were none the wiser. Oh my gosh, you guys need to go Boy, find that. Oh, it's much that. better without that one rap number in there. <laughs> Cabinet. In it. Oh my gosh. Go. Oh my gosh. And then gosh. we end with Footloose, and yeah, and we're back to full circle. Wait, wait. So you guys have other songs that are skipped? You guys don't, or did you have the other songs in there? You don't have like Heaven, Heaven Help Me Again, where the where the Reverend sings. Yeah, we have that oh, again. We have the two reprises. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. The okay. Two there are two reprises. Well, it's, it's three reprises really, because oh, this is three so reprises. Up to the <laughs> there of are a lot of reprises. So you guys didn't like? I mean, because I know whatever with the if you guys didn't like the other version of Heaven Help Me with the Reverend, again, I like it. I like this song, and I thought legitimately it was like good. Uh, I think it's. I don't know. I can I, I can resonate with like even some of it with like growing especially like growing up in Bible Belt with faith and struggling yes. with your faith, especially in like extreme like grief and loss and wrestling with that. And now he's and now he's like struggling with that and like a lot and I don't know not to get like too heavy, but I was like, man, I, 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 for trying to squeeze that into like a musical about kids, I appreciated at least trying to do that and trying to have some reverence at some point and to try again, make not this, um, just a mustache twirling bad guy, but trying to get, show some humanity of, of someone who very ignorantly and I don't know, wrongly abused his power, but it came from this misguided sense of like, he just was so afraid of losing his daughter. Like he lost his son. It's like, if you don't believe, if you don't believe that in somehow, then that the whole show stands on nothing. And maybe that's where a lot of this kind of comes from with the movie. Cause it's like, Oh, that's lame. And so if you don't like that, well, then, of course, then it's the whole musical just it, it has nothing to stand on, if that makes right. sense. You, if you don't buy that at all, and I, I kind of buy it. Do you, is, it too, is it way too left field for you guys or way too reaching for you guys? I don't know if that's the right word. It just feels like a narrative jump, if that makes sense. It does it's get there very quickly. Fine, I think, but it's just this, it's this, like, villain character almost so that they're giving the emotional core to you hmm. know That's, i feel like they could have uh, done better if they focused on the mother more yes yeah the mom gets oh you mean vi or you mean ren's mom yes yeah, so i meant i thought he meant vi okay yes, vi. vi. yeah vi does get uh, they a lot of good parts so yeah i mean yeah you're right it does get there very quickly because i think the trial is over he knows that that his mo uh, ren's mom basically just reaffirms that yeah you know he already had the votes bought and so he goes to talk to him <laughs> and then he's like, basically, you're going to lose your daughter. Like you lost, maybe not, maybe not like you lost your son, but you're going to lose her. And then he's like, get out. And then that's when it kind of goes into this soliloquy kind of song. Uh, so yeah, it does get there very quickly. It's like, we got three minutes to kind of wrap up this whole story and his whole emotional journey yeah. to kind of get him to come a 180 and reverse his direction on what he should allow. It has allow. to end with dancing. It has to end that way. Exactly. Anymore. We gotta get to the dancing. Exactly. We gotta My lose opinion, the foots. They should have just had the court case end it so it could be a true musical ending. Yes, in, that is oh, how all musicals end. That's, uh, yeah, I could have seen that. I, I can't remember how it is in the movie. I wonder how much they felt just like shackled to the movie. And like, well, in the movie, they did this. I guess we gotta do what the movie did. 
But because I think you're right, I think ending in a court could have been interesting. But yeah, yeah, that's a, that's that's a good, that's an interesting thought. <laughs> but you guys didn't well, have the rap, so that's why I don't even know. We I didn't have the I rap, can't even so trust we didn't even you guys. Have the show. We didn't even really see the whole show. You really did. You know what? You guys haven't lived. That's like probably thirty percent of it right there. <laughs> <laughs> you probably did. You probably did. But yeah, you're right. Then 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 you get like seventeen <laughs> reprises after that, and then you get all the way to. To Footloose to end it up, to bookend that bad boy. And we, we're back to full circle, and then the show starts again. And then we're just in this loop of the Footloose. Yeah, the Footloose, that never Footloose ends. leads back into yep. on any Sunday. And, it's, and now he, it's, has it's to leave, it never ends. he has to leave Beaumont, and they're like, yeah, I gotta go here. Oh, where the heck is that place? And oh, just keeps d- leaving. Band places. dancing is banned here, too? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> He's just going town to town, making dancing legal. Yeah, the oh, the, no, the that's musical. A, no, that's a movie. Yeah, that is interesting. <laughs> about, like having the emotional core be with the Reverend. That's an interesting. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good point because the the musical basically is over at that point, and then it's just like yeah. yay, and then let's like dance for three songs, like reprises, and and even have like kind of yeah. a med like the Footloose medley at the end where you have other songs kind of come in and intertwined in there with the greatest hits of the musical. Yeah, so there's like no story at that point. You're just dancing and celebrating, I guess. <clears throat> what a way to end Hell it. Hell yeah. Yeah, that is a great way to end it. Um, speaking of ending it, guys, what is our overall thoughts on Footloose the Musical and our cheese rating? Adam, are you aware of our cheese rating at I'm all? I'm not. All right, Andrew, you're up first to demonstrate. Okay. Um... So, I mean, overall, it's hard for me to give a, like, objective opinion on this since we watched a high school production, uh, but not, like, a professional production, um, and I wouldn't want to be unfair. And, and you didn't seen... watch the rap. How can I even, yeah, and I, how can I, I even validate, the these version. opinions are invalidated, these, I can't, Although, we don't even have the rap in here yet. <laughs> I have to say, I think the professional versions of it now don't have the rap either, so, uh, the UK is Maybe not really Maybe you got the, the wrong rap. version. Uh, I bet you... I bet you if the UK, if they were doing the rap still, it would have gotten five stars instead of four. Um, <laughs> oh, you're right. You're... <laughs> <laughs> those accents but... would have really ne- would have come into their own on that rap part. Those those oh, accents yes. would have fallen oh, into yes. place. <laughs> but, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> it's just a fun show. I don't know. I, I don't know if I would, like, recommend it to people. If you like Footloose, I'm sure you'll like this. I don't... We're not going to say run out and go find it, but if you're, like, local community theaters doing a production... Oh, if your community theater's putting it on, then you're, like, you got a good show on your hands, probably, because I don't think... This is, a, this is probably a pretty tough one to screw up. I don't think you could perform this poorly in, in such a way that would be bad. Um, so... Yeah, it's a good one for your high school. It's a good one for your community. And uh, if it's ever back on Broadway, which it probably never will be, I don't know if no. it's worth a two hundred dollar ticket. But other than if that, you're in the UK, it's probably going to come around in a few if years. It's, so. If it's in the UK, you if you're in the UK, you have already seen this, and it's your favorite show of all time. Um, <laughs> right next to the DJ Save My Life, starring David Hasselhoff. <laughs> If you're in the UK, then you're um, listening to this podcast while staring at your musical frame poster from the the, the pamphlet yeah, you got from going to the musical. With the entire like 50 person cast, every single one of them signed it. Uh, <laughs> exactly. You know their names. There's a photo with you and every <laughs> cast member, even the ensemble members. <laughs> they're going um, on the street. They're like baseball players. They're like, "Hey, you footloose." Uh. And as far as the cheese, I'm going to give it a, a large Texas cheddar, which is, uh, I don't know, it feels appropriate. <laughs> just, yeah, it feels right. Um, all right, I can go next just so I can get mine out the way. I agree with most of every sentiment that Andrew said. I really do think this is a great for like a large cast that you can put a lot of female roles in because a lot of theater productions don't get many male actors and yeah this predominantly has them in the leads but in like the supporting characters and like big battle numbers a lot of roles for girls a lot of roles you can just put a girl in and it would just kind of work as well it's full cheese a lot of songs you'll recognize (laughs) you can just sing and dance along in the audience you'll Um, have a good time you will. So the only cheese rating I can give it is Cheese Curls Double Cheese Flavored Maze Snacks by Willard's Cheese. Oh, okay. <laughs> because yes, that's good. Willard. That's good. <laughs> um, all right, Adam, what is your overall thoughts and your cheese rating? Okay, so obviously, as we know at this point, biased. 
because I love it. has a special <laughs> place in my heart because it. And you it's saw you saw the rap school. one, so you saw. Perfect. And I saw the rap one, so I'm the only true voice of authority here on this musical <laughs> right now. So my opinion is most you valid. Walked in the shoes of Willard. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, I think everything you guys said is accurate. I I, I think that. There, there's not. There's a lot of like, great songs in here that people will know. Uh, there's even the slower songs are still catchy and really nice. And you're like, you might leave the theater or whatever, like humming some of these because they're they're catch. There's a lot of catchy songs. Do I think it's the most ultra high art of Broadway? No, it's <laughs> it's not. But I but I do think it's if you're gonna. Hmm. I might I might retract this later. But it might be a good way of introducing someone who's maybe not used to like musicals or doesn't like mainstream musicals because they can't really connect with them. They can't connect with like a, a 15 year old can't connect with Phantom of the Opera or like Rent or, or, or what have you. But with this one, it's like kids dancing to songs they probably heard before. So I agree about the idea of like if you want to already know some songs and a community theaters doing it or a high school and you want to get younger people into it or if you're a fan of the movie absolutely it's a lot of fun and it's really it it goes down really smooth it feel it's just it's yeah it's 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 really easy to watch and i'm gonna give it a rating of a full bag of cheetos which you're gonna want <laughs> as you're e as you're watching this from the comfort of your home or from front seat of broadway you're gonna want those cheetos with you now, where can everyone Crinkle download open. your uh, your high school production? <laughs> yeah, so, you got a mega upload link. I will. I have burned it after watching it. I burned it as soon as I watched. Oh. As soon as I got done watching it, so no one, so I could deprive the world of it. Um, I just realized, Bree, what was your overall thoughts on our discussion and your cheese rating there? I usually do that, but I forgot to do it. It's okay. I wasn't here last week or two weeks ago. Um, this was fun. This was very fun, and I was downloading all the songs while you guys talked about it, and all the songs are bops. There you go. Why? Listen, yeah, it, we needed your voice you in here to back me on this stuff. <laughs> they're all bops. Um, but in honor of our lovely guest, Adam's favorite song, I'm going to give this, uh, my cheese rating is Bird, Wood, Blue, Heaven, Cheese. In honor of that song, Heaven, Help Me. Oh, yes. <laughs> You get it. A plus yes. on the cheese rating. Adam, you, got a fan. you were a wonderful guest. Thank, Thank you so you much for, for having us. me. It was great being here with you guys, talking about the if best musical of all time. If you ever want to come back on, <laughs> if you want to come back on, always feel four free. Stars. Your door, our door is four, stars. four stars. Four stars. Four stars. Best, best musical, musical of all time. Four out of five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you compare this to Sunday in the Park with George, on equal footing. Equal footing. <laughs> exactly. It's true. Actually, this is a little bit better because like, I know some of the songs in this. <laughs> I mean, George, George, George Seurat or Kevin Bacon? Come on, which one's going to put you in the in the seat? You're, you're right. You got a good point. It's Kevin Bacon. Uh, <laughs> Adam, uh, promote your wonderful content. Let people know where they can find you. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel called Entertain the Elk that does video essays exploring everything from like film and TV to literature and paintings. And I just did uh, one on Stephen Sondheim on Sunday in the Park with George. Uh, paralleling Seurat's painting pointillism technique to the way that Sondheim wrote that. And so, yeah, I'd like doing a lot of experimental essays. If you're into just like art and entertainment, go check it out. Again, it's Entertain the Elk on YouTube. And I also uh, am about six months into a podcast. Uh, it's a Dungeons and Dragons real play podcast called Of Mice and Men and Monsters. And the whole idea is that <laughs> my wife is the dungeon master and she's a high school English teacher. And so what we're doing is that we're combining, we're taking D and D elements and colliding them in uh, classic pieces of literature. And so we're kind of playing in those almost like a fan fiction kind of world. So we've played so far in like Frankenstein and Moby Dick and Robin Hood. And we're just about to finish uh, the count of Monte Cristo. So if you're a fan of D and D or comedy podcasts or famous pieces of literature or just People being idiots and playing games together. Uh, go find that wherever you listen to podcasts. It's called Of Mice and Men and Monsters. And that's all I got. That's a great premise. That's and I always like to try to recommend like um, something of uh, our guests that I personally love. Oh, awesome. Of course, the Sondheim one would be the easy one to pick. Um, but I really want Love Your The Day the Blank Died series. Um, I really 
think that those are the best. Um, but I love your The Day Halloween Died and The oh. Day Nightmare on Elm Street Died because I know, strangely, there's a lot of overlap between our fans and horror movies. Oh, cool. So... I think you guys should check those ones out because that's great. But also, if you're like into like the lighthouse analysis, I know a lot of you people like that because that's basically a play. There's so much great stuff in that YouTube. I didn't channel. understand Please the lighthouse at all when I watched it, so I'll probably have to watch this. There's analysis. farts. There's there's <laughs> so many farts. There, there, there's drinking. What I needed. What I needed sub. I needed to? subtitles when I watched it because Willem Dafoe. I didn't Defoe understand what is, happened. Yeah, it is. It's complicated. Hark! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's that's basically the movie. That that one word is the movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Accurate, but also that movie's great. It is. Um, it is. But do you know what else is great, Andrew? What's that? Our wonderful patrons, thank you guys for listening. Please follow us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher at Musicals with Cheese. We're on Twitter at Cheesy Musicals, Patreon Musicals with Cheese, Instagram Musicals with Cheese, YouTube page Musicals with Cheese. We have a Patreon-only podcast called Patreon with Cheese, where we update you on, like, we're talking about TV shows there. We're currently doing Gallivant. Email us at MusicalTheaterLives at gmail.com. Our title card was created by the amazing Jolene Casco. Go send her some love at Jolene Casco. Our keeper of the cheese is Juliet Antonio. Thank you for keeping track of that. This show is produced and edited by the wonderful, the incredible, one of my favorite human beings on the entire planet, Brianna Jones. I love you so much, Bri. Thank you to the Broadway Podcast Network for having us on the platform and for not kicking us off yet for talking shit about Kevin Bacon. All right, you guys. <laughs> is there anything else you got to say before we wrap this Kevin on Bacon? up? <laughs> I mean, everybody cut loose. What else is there to say? That's that's basically the theme cut of this loose. whole musical. Cut loose, cut guys. Loose. Hell yeah. Um, and next week is our 150th episode, so we got a special one coming. Um, Congrats, guys. Thank you for, thank you so much. Uh, we're so glad to have you here. If you ever want to come back on, feel free. The door is open. I love that. That'd be awesome. But until, but until then, we'll see you next time on Musicals with Cheese. I'm old enough for a hero. Oh, no, you're going to ruin it more. Wait, we could have been singing this whole time? I could have been singing this whole time?